Welcome back. We're on Judges chapter 3. These are the nations that the Lord left in the land to test those Israelites who had not experienced the wars of Canaan. He did this to teach warfare to generations of Israelites who had no experience in battle. He did this to teach warfare to generations of Israelites. What a divine benevolent being! These are the nations, the Philistines, those living under the five Philistine rulers, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites living in the mountains of Lebanon from Mount Baal, uh, Hermon, to Lebo Hamoth. These people were left to test the Israelites, to see whether they would obey the commands the Lord had given to their ancestor through Moses. Well, why doesn't Yahweh just tell them whether they're going to obey them or not? Uh, isn't he like all-knowing? Isn't that what I always hear? So the people of Israel lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and they intermarried with them. Israelite sons married their daughters, and Israelite daughters were given in marriage to their sons. And the Israelites served their gods. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They forgot about the Lord their God, and they served the images of Baal and the Asherah poles. They forgot about the Lord their God. So you didn't like think, you know, hey, guys, hey, I'm right here, huh? I'm right here, huh? Huh? <laughs> then the Lord burned with, <laughs> excuse me, then the Lord burned with anger against Israel, and he turned them over to King Cushon Rishathaim of Aram Naharam, and the Israelites served Cushon Rishathaim for eight years, <laughs> but when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help, the Lord raised up a rescuer to save them. His name was Othniel, the son of Caleb's younger brother Kenaz. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he became Israel's judge. He went to war against King Cushan Rishathaim of Aram, and the Lord gave Othniel victory over him. So there was peace in the land for forty years. Then Othniel's son of Kenaz died. Once again the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, and the Lord gave King Eglon of Moab control over Israel because of their evil. Eglon enlisted the Ammonites and Amalekites as allies, and then he went out and defeated Israel, taking possession of Jericho, the city of Palms. And the Israelites served Eglon of Moab for eighteen years. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help, the Lord again raised up a rescuer to save them. His name was Ehud, son of Gera, a left-handed man of the tribe of Benjamin. The Israelites sent Ehud to deliver their tribute money to King Eglon of Moab. So Ehud made a double-edged dagger that was about a foot long, and he shaped it to his right thigh, keeping it hidden under his clothing. He brought the tribute money to Eglon, who was very fat. <laughs> After delivering the payment, Ehud started home with those who had helped carry the tribute. But when Ehud reached the stone idols near Gilgal, he turned back. He came to Eglon and said, I have a secret message for you. So the king commanded his servants, Be quiet! And he sent them all out of the room. Ehud walked over to Eglon, who was sitting alone in a cool upstairs room, and, and Ehud said, I have a message from God for you. As King Eglon rose from his seat, Ehud rich, reached with his left hand, pulled out the dagger strapped to his right thigh, and plunged it into the king's belly. The dagger went so deep that the handle disappeared beneath the king's fat. So Ehud did not pull out the dagger, and the king's bowels emptied. Oh my god! Then Ehud closed and locked the doors of the room and escaped down the latrine. After Ehud was gone, the king's servants returned and found the doors to the upstairs room locked. They thought he might be using the latrine in the room, so they waited. But when the king didn't come out after a long delay, they became concerned and got a key. And when they opened the doors, they found their master dead on the floor. While the servants were waiting, Ehud escaped, passing the stone idols on, their, uh, on his way to Syrah. When he arrived in the hill country of Ephraim, uh, Ehud sounded a call to arms. Then he led a band of Israelites down from the hills. Follow me, he said, for the Lord has given you victory over Moab, your enemy. So they followed him. 
and the Israelites took control of the shallow crossings of the Jordan River across from Moab, preventing anyone from crossing. They attacked the Moabites and killed about 10,000 of their strongest and most able-bodied warriors. Not one of them escaped. So Moab was conquered by Israel that day, and there was peace in the land for 80 years. After Ehud, Shamgar, son of Anoth, rescued Israel. He once killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. The solution to this problem of evil seems to be eluding these people since they seem to keep going to war with evil people. You think anyone might ever be like, Hey, Yahweh, how do we solve the problem of evil? I mean, you seem to have a problem with it. How do we get rid of it? Clearly, going to war with people doesn't work. It keeps popping up. How do we do it? What's the solution? All right, well, that was Judges chapter 3. We will be back with Judges chapter 4. Have a good one. Peace.